Yeah, good morning. This is Bang Bang Ray Hill. Call that storm last night, mate. It freaked the life out of me. I had my window open in the bedroom. It's got so blue, it blew so hard, it opened my window, man. I feel like I shit myself. <laughs> All the rain was coming in, it's crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, I was, we was uh, talking about when I lived in uh, Lewisham, uh, when I first got over there, um, and I met Jimmy Tibbet, and me and Jimmy got on really, really, really close together, and he, he um, when I started going down, down to Beckett, and he could see that I, there's something there, you know what I mean? And he came in one day and he said to me, listen, do you fancy a little job? I went, yeah, what's it? Right, you don't mind. He said, look, Lenny McLean went to the pub called The Swan through Rotherhide Tunnel. I think it was called The Swan, you know, on the left hand, go through the tunnels on the left hand side, yeah, the other side of the water. He said, do you fancy a little job? I went, yeah, yeah. He said, but you're working with, um, I think it was Doc, Johnny, Doc, it was either Davy Old or Johnny Old, the two, the two twins, yeah. Uh, well known, well known, well known people, mate. Well known gangsters, really, mate. Well known gangsters, but they're black cab drivers, you know what I mean? I said, yeah, yeah, but can I have a white fight? I said, okay. Anyway, mate, I got a bus to Rotherway Tunnel, to the beginning of Rotherway Tunnel, just around Jamaica Road there. Uh, walked into the tunnel and it, it, it sort of like goes up. You know, you can lift up to the walkway. And I thought, well, I'm fit, training. And uh, I had a pair of jeans and a pair of boots, you know, and a, a, and a jacket. It's only a pub, you know what I mean? And a zip-up jacket, you know. So I'm running through the, I'm running through Rovai Tunnel, mate. That's the worst thing ever. But I had the job for quite a bit of time, you know. But it's the worst thing ever, mate. I mean, I should do it most days, you know, weekends, Friday, Saturday. <sighs> running through the tunnel is it's not easy. It's not. It's really hard work. It's echoing like anything, and it's long. You don't realise how long it is. I think about a mile long, yeah. And not only is it long, but all the um, all the all the traffic is coming through. All the, mo all, all the motors, all the fumes, it's not good, mate. You get the other side and, and you feel, God, whoa. Anyway, um, yeah, got to the pub. I think it was Davey Old I met. I met Davey Old, uh, went in the pub. Um, listen, mate, you know, you, for, you've got to remember, I've never, uh, like, I live in Lewisham, and uh, really, like, um, for me, the other side of the water is different people, but I haven't really been in Lewisham very long. I ain't really re well known yet, yeah? But anyway, I want the money, so it's handy, you know what I mean? I think I was getting 50 quid a night, for so long ago it was 50 quid. And uh, anyway, so, mate, I had this trouble in the pub. I mean, I had quite a bit of trouble in that pub. I mean, it's a bit of an odd pub. I mean, Lenny, Lenny McLean ran it uh, with someone else, and uh, they said it was a bit of an handful. It, even he said it was an handful for him, you know what I mean? But anyway, and uh, we had some trouble in there one night, and uh, some bad, bad trouble. Um, I got hit across it with a bottle. And I hit the floor, and uh, they kicked me all around the side, the ribs, and in my face, smashed all my face up, you know what I mean? But I, I got up and, uh, and carried on fighting, you know what I mean? But, I mean, we lost the day, really. We lost the, we lost the battle, but we won it in a way because uh, the, the, they can't come back, you know what I mean? <laughs> the bard, you know? I mean, mind you, I did get a bit of an idea, you know what I mean? My, my face was all smashed up, and my ribs was a bit sore, and, uh, and, and then I had to go back for the tunnel. <laughs> not good is it you know what I mean you get set up easy and then we went back through the tunnel uh, got a bus the other side night bus and got home smashed up a little bit but she's used to seeing me smashed up because all, all the fighting I was doing you know and then Jimmy said to me look um, I don't think it's a good thing that pub right I went no no it's, it's 50 quid a night it's, it, it's 100 quid a, uh, for the weekend it's it, 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 it's earned money isn't it you know what I mean he said no 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 we, you know he said look, we've got to cut the fights if you want them I went okay and he took me to a, pu uh, uh, a pub in Deptford, and uh, not not the Arpen area. We went to a, a pub, and and, and uh, he said uh, there's a couple of bouncers in there that uh, fancy the chances. You know, do you fancy? And I said, well, we'll go and have a look. Uh, one in there, cough oh, fuck me, mate. One of these bouncers, big beard, massive guy, massive guy, yeah. And I was sat down. Jimmy bought me a little drink. I think it was a Guinness, I think, and some and some black currant juice. And uh, oh, well, this big geez with a beard I mean Jimmy was pointing over to me and uh, he went to me all right he put his finger up I went yeah sweet mate sweet all right, all right. and the geezer went and nodded and I went oh, and he walked over to Jimmy and he went it's got he's going to fight this guy down at Harvey Social Club will you do you fancy it I said yeah yeah God, I just showed you the fancy it yeah anyway and um, give me two weeks two weeks get myself a bit fit you know he wanted it straight away bit of a, bit of a flash guy bit of an old get, get guy about not 
19, 20 stone, a bit big, you know, a lot of fat, you know, big fat waist and all that. So I thought, yeah, I'll have some of that anyway. Um, two weeks to, to, to train. And I had these people sponsor me in, in a pub just down the road from uh, Deptford. No, Catford. Catford. It's down the road from Catford. I forget the number of the pub now. But they uh, sponsored me. The red, I think it was the Red Lion. Um, Bob Blackie and Blackie friend, yeah. And uh, they sponsored me. And they bought me a uh, red and black uh, gowns and red and black shorts and all that. And bought my boots and bits and pieces, yeah. Because I was, you know, I was coming on quite far. I was, I was knocking knocking lots of fighters out. You know, knocking them all out, really, in a way, stopping them or knocking them sparkler. And uh, anyway, got him with this big, uh, went, well, went into the Harveys. He's there with a load of his mates, his uh, bouncers and friends and all this, that and other. They're all looking at me going, you've got no chance, mate, you know what I mean? That's sweet, sweet, yeah. And all going, go on, mate, go on, mate. And I had a record called Call for Cats. Yeah, Call for Cats. Did it, did it, did it, did it. I can't do it, but Call for Cats, yeah. And uh, anyway, so they played this thing, like, Call for Cats, oh, I'm coming in, like, like the thing. He got in the ring, massive, massive guy, big fat belly, mate. I thought, okay, fair enough. Uh, so I looked at him first rounds, you know what I mean? And, and, and I see that this geezer was like, he's done a bit, he must have done a bit of fight, and he won a fall. He had his hands up, boy, but he had his hands up, boy, and he was leaving his belly, he was belly, big belly, mate. And uh, I threw a couple of punches to, to his to, to his chin, and, uh, and and then he could see that he was holding his hands up all the time. And I went, wham! I hit him, mate. Listen to me. I hit him with my right hands in the solar plexus, mate. Listen, he went over like a fucking second time. Bang! I must have smashed. I must have broke his ribs. I don't know what I done, but he was in bad. He's in a bad way, and I hit him so hard with a right hand to the solar plexus, mate, he's just gone. I kept hitting him upstairs, his hands get cut away, wham, bang, when I done him, and, uh, and everybody, they all loved it, and they loved me, and I was, I've had maybe, what, 10 fights in there by now, in all the social, social clubs, and, uh, and I wasn't mucking about, you know what I mean, I was knocking them all out in there, and, uh, and everybody liked me, bang, bang, Ray all, and, uh, it wasn't Bang Bang Ray Hall, but it was this Bang Bang Hill, yeah. And uh, a geezer called um, Brian Cox, uh, the actor. Uh, Brian Cox, the actor, he does, he done um, Troy, he done Born Identity, Glasses. Uh, very, very well known, Brian Cox. A very good friend of um, my mate Jimmy Tibbet. And uh, Brian Cox gave me that name, Bang Bang. Yeah, and I was happy with that, you know. He called, he done a record called For Cats, uh, Brian Cox. I like Brian Cox, you know what I mean? And I remember when he was like, because he had, he had an accident uh, of his leg, and uh, smashed his leg a bit, but now he's doing really, really well. I mean, he's, he's multied up, isn't he? He's a multi-millionaire, Brian Cox. He lives in America. Um, I'd love to um, be able to get hold of him. I mean, he really liked my sister. My sister had horses, and he, li he liked my sister, you know. I mean, my sister was really, really pretty anyway, but he really loved my sister. And not only did he, um, did he buy me bits and pieces that I needed for me fighting, he he become um, he become a right good friend and and a really good friend, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, you, it, and then people are hard to come by, you know. And and I wouldn't what I should have done is get into the equity because he was in the equity big time, and he wanted me to get into it. He kept saying to me, "Look, right, get to get the equity, mate. You're gonna you're, you're gonna go places." And uh, look at him now, molted up. Then the opportunities you get, yeah, we all we all get the opportunities to do things we never do, you know, and and then when it is time to do them, it's too late, you know. Uh, but obviously, um, I'm doing my book. The book's going to be a good book, I hope, and um, everybody got to buy it. You know, it's going to be fantastic, and we're going to have an opening night where people can come down and sign the book and do a photograph and all that. Um, we're going to do it in a hotel, a nice hotel. And it's gonna be good, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I'm doing the book every Thursday, every Wednesday, you know, either Wednesday or Thursday for two or three hours, and it's it's you know big big stories. I think it'd be maybe two books. I mean, I've got big stories in my life, you know. But I want everybody to enjoy my book, you know what I mean? I mean, it's something that um, you know, I didn't expect. I didn't expect it to come out so well, you know, because I mean, I've got so many stories, you know, and and, and the most of them are. Violence and me being as excessive as a child and all those sorts of things and and it's things you'd never you'd never imagine that happen in someone's life you know why well, am I still here but I am you know and I ain't gonna go yet for a bit of time hopefully yeah 
Anyway, um, then Jimmy's gone to me that, you know, like, I'm having quite a few fights now, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, we'd offered Lenny out a few times and he hasn't shown up on the shows. But as I say, it isn't maybe Lenny's fault. It might have been Vic Andretti or, uh, or Frank Warren, you know what I mean? But everybody, listen, it's everybody, yeah, I'd never beat Lenny McLean. But listen, it isn't about, it isn't about that. We're all men, yeah? We're all big men. We're all big, powerful men, yeah? And so why should we, why should we say, oh yeah, he's going to call me, you know what I mean? No, mate, that ain't on. As I said before, there was at least 20, 30 heavyweights um, that he always, that, that, Lenny, that, that Lenny bypassed from South East London, who fires himself at Lewisham, Catford, Deptford, Woolwich, Bermondsey, uh, and all around at Blackheath. Some good fighters, some good, good fighters, some very powerful men. I mean, my best, my best pal, um, Peter Kelly, he could have a right fight, Peter. Me and Peter met in prison, and Peter could have a right fight. He stood by me always. And uh, we've had a few hours about certain things. Uh, I remember one. <laughs> he's funny for you. Uh, he's uh, he, he's brilliant. He was brilliant at what he did. You know what I mean? I remember he said to me one day. He said, "Look, I'm going to uh, a certain hotel in Israel, Roger." Yeah? And uh, he had some. He had his ex amount. This uh, jewelry. This a lot of jewelry that he was going to collect from his people in his hotel. And uh, he wanted me uh, to wait around the back. In a car, you know, like, oh, okay. He went upstairs, Peter. He said to these people, uh, "Look, you know, what sort of money do you want for it?" You know, he gave him a deposit on it, and they said, "Well, boom, boom, boom. it comes to, it comes to a lot of money, mate. Some big diamonds, there, rubies, emeralds, them sort of things, all gold and everything." So as he's walking down the stairs, now he's already told me to do this. Phone up the police and tell them that someone walks in there with a gun. <laughs> so I did. Well, the old bill steamed in there like lunatics. And uh, obviously the people that he's just got the jury from uh, shit themselves. Uh, thought that, that it was that Peter had been nicked or whatever. So then, then Peter disappeared and took all the jury. And then this Peter start these people start making themselves a bit busy. And um, also uh, I said to them, look, Peter's been nicked. Uh, Peter's been nicked with all them bits and pieces, you know. Uh, if I was you, I uh, wouldn't make yourself busy on it, you know what I mean? And shit themselves because of the old bill, seeing the old bill. So we got away with all this jury, yeah. And uh, then I went down to Bermondsey uh, to pick my money up for Peter. And uh, <laughs> he just went missing. You know what I mean? Missing with money and everything. So me and him had a you know bad fallout, you know, really, really bad fallout. But um, that's what you do, mates. And about four weeks later, he came up and gave me about five, five, six grand, you know. And I can't really remember what it was, but in them days, it was quite a lot of money, yeah. And I was, you know, I needed it. It sorted me right out, you know. I was still living in Lewisham. And uh, yeah, it was. Peter was my best pal mate at that time. You know what I mean? Good man. Um, he had a wife called Ka he had a wife called Kathy. I think he had a kid called Peter. I'm not quite sure. He had a daughter. I'm not quite sure. And I may may have been Kathy. I'm not quite sure. They lived in a block of flats opposite um, the Lily Putt Lily Putt Arms, owned by uh, Billy Ed. And we was going in all scanning there. See Bill. Bill loved me to death. Bill. Because come on, like Bill was a good fighter, mate. And to fight. And to get him in the ring with Bill and spar with Bill, you know, like quite a lot down 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 at Aberstock Hill, no, like in uh, Aberstock Hill, and like come on, it's 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 a feat to get in with a good pro, you know, and to teach you a lot. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Rail, just a quick podcast, and uh, I hope you like it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Press the like button, subscribe, and uh, take care. And I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, because I'll be doing the run later or walk, or whatever, and getting in the gym, so I'll be, it'll be on, it may, maybe another one, I'll be, be on here, yeah, or I'll put it on tomorrow morning for you, okay, take care, and have a nice day, yeah, bye-bye.